are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Making notes on your cue cards. Hello there. Welcome to IELTS Podcast. My name is Ben Worthington and in this tutorial we are specifically looking at the IELTS speaking part, part two, and I want to share with you a detailed process for making notes and also how to approach IELTS speaking part two. Now before we jump into it, let me just tell you who I am. My name is Ben Worthington. I'm from England. Now, about oof, 20 years ago, oh my goodness. <laughs> now about 18 years ago, I left the UK and I started to live in Spain. And I stumbled across teaching English. And I was one of those useless English teachers. <laughs> I was one of those useless English teachers who was, um, you know, native English teacher. Oh, I can teach English. And, you know, I did that for about six months and I was like, oh, this is horrible. I need to get better. So eventually I decided to specialize in teaching IELTS. I chose IELTS because the results are measurable. When you're teaching adult learners, it could be years until they take the next exam. If you're teaching that's even if they decide to take the exam. If you're teaching business students, they don't need it for an exam. They need it for meetings, for negotiations and whatnot. So it's really difficult to measure if you're do it, to measure what if what you're doing is having any impact, if it's having a positive impact. So that's why I decided, okay, I'm gonna specialize in IELTS because there I can get results and I can get results and measure the results more, most importantly. And so how did I get competent? How did I get professional with teaching IELTS? Well, I started IELTS podcasts. I started interviewing all the experts I could find, capture that advice, test it out. If it was useful, I used it in my uh, courses. And that's where we are today, you know, 10, no, eight years later, We've got IELTS podcast, I don't can't remember, eight or ten years later. We have IELTS podcast. We've got our, we've got one of the best courses online for, online for getting students the results, you know. Um, so check that out at IELTSpodcast.com. But we continue to innovate. We've got the AI essay checking tool where you can get your uh, band score estimated. Within seconds, just go to IELTSpodcast.com, top corner, top right-hand corner, or top of the page. You'll see a link there for your free essay check. There you can get your a band score estimation, you know, for all the four criteria. You can get it in seconds. It's extremely useful for those on a budget. And to get more detailed feedback, you can upgrade for $12 a month and get as much feedback as you want. As submit as many essays as you want and get more detailed feedback each time. It's just a fast way to improve, especially if you've got your exam coming up soon and you need that feedback, you need to pinpoint quickly where you're going wrong. Right then, let's jump into IELTS speaking, specifically part two, the cue card. We're going to look at developing your ideas and expanding the questions and the answers, okay? Um, so imagine we get this cue card. Talk about an older person you admire. You should say who the person is, how long you've known them, what qualities they have, and why you, why you admire them. So the topic is quite a common topic to talk about, a person. Okay, so it's really useful to look at, you know, adjectives to describe the person. Now, a lot of students will say, I like this person, they are very nice, I really like them, I met them a long time ago. And I've got a few private students now, and one way that we upgrade their scores, one way we upgrade their language, is that whenever they're speaking, I'm just like, hey Justino, hey when, can't use really good, can't use really like, can't use very good. No, all of that is 
is the lower level vocabulary. We're going to say, this is, um, I'm going to tell you about an amazing person I admire. I'm going to tell you about one of the most influential people in my life. I'm going to tell you about um, a fantastically interesting person that I admire. And it just becomes so much richer at that exact moment. You know, we inject some passion. And I didn't have to do this with my Latino student. They've already got a lot of passion. But with one um, student, uh, she's an amazing student, incredibly intelligent, incredibly fast learning. Uh, but her culture, they're not so emotional. She's Chinese. And I think in Asia, some parts of Asia, it's standard practice just not to be, not to show your emotions so much, okay? Not as much as, as say, other cultures where it just is part of the culture. So what we did is we, we started introducing, you know, this intonation. And wow, it was a game changer for her um, descriptive qualities, for her language. You know, she starts injecting this emotion and she's like well just the other day actually she said um i heard that you have incredibly poor internet in your region and i was like wow when that and um, just by saying incredibly poor you know how much richer is that than very bad internet you know and then uh, also another part that she she improved with was by saying um well, I'd like to tell you about an incredibly interesting person I know. Can you see how I went up there and I stressed the incredibly interesting? Incredibly interesting sounds <laughs> quite strong on its own, but if we emphasize it, we put that intonation in there, put a bit of Latino emotion, <laughs> it becomes so much richer, you know, especially with a, um, especially if you're coming from a language that does not have much of this richness. You definitely have to lay it on thicker just to improve, um, you know, improve the pronunciation, the intonation, the delivery of what we're saying. So right then, let's get back to describing the, the topic, okay? So as I said, in this case, it's a who. It's either going to be a who, um, a what, a when, um, or aware and in these questions they are asking for detailed information okay um, so it's incredibly important to add that detail try and close your eyes picture that person you know brown hair long hair blonde hair curly hair fuzzy hair you know what did they wear what was the character just try and think about that person for a bit and then you know list those adjectives how you're going to describe them right then so we've got our cue card we understand it we know we're going for a who in this one we're going to give that detailed description now how do we make notes well first of all avoid writing out your complete answer you know word for word because one is going to take too long two um you're not going to get that much information if you're doing it word for word three you're probably going to read from your notes in which case it's not going to sound natural so what do we do well just make bullet points you know we're going to close his eyes we're going to think about it okay um, we'll just say, okay, I'm going to think about Mr. Sykes, who's my economics teacher back in June, back in high school. He's definitely, let's see, a born leader. He's determined. He was charismatic. He was well respected. Bonus points, by the way, when you're listing these um, these descriptive phrases, if we can think of collocations, you know. Um, as a side note, um, one of my students, I asked her about a actor she admired and she talked about Keanu Reeves and she admires him because he donates money to fight to find a cure for cancer then a few weeks later I ask her about a band of music or a musical genre that she likes she tells me about Travis and Britpop and whatever music like about I don't know 10 20 years ago um, 
which is fine. You know, we get even to include the past, uh, the past tense, obviously. But she said, ah, oh, this band, um, uh, one of the reasons I admire this band is because they, f as part of their earnings, goes to charities to develop a cure for cancer, to help find a cure for cancer. And it was just by chance that, you know, both this band and the actor she liked were both funding uh, some of their income towards finding a cure for cancer. So what I'm saying is that, um, you know, some phrases and some ideas you can use in multiple ways, you know? So maybe you're just talking about a place that you like, you know, the place is my local library. One reason I especially like them is because part of the money they earn or collect from uh, from the people who go to the library helps to help helps charities to find a cure for cancer. Okay, <laughs> just a side note, but you need to be a little bit creative with that. Now then, as I said, so we're making bullet points. Okay, you could even put in your bullet point help find a cure for cancer or funds charities that helps find a cure for cancer. Okay. Uh, if that person does do that. Now, um, as I said, we can do bullet points, okay? And we could definitely do collocations as well. And this just helps us go into more detail, okay? Now, the last part of the cue card, just moving on, is going to probably be a how or why question. Now, you probably want to talk the most at this last point. Okay, uh, the reason why I like them, okay, and you're going to de develop it. This is why you've got to develop it. Um, this is the, the reason why I like them is because, okay, um, the reason why I, I love this place is because the reason why I admire, the main reason why I admire this older person is because I've heard that they donate a large part of their income to charities to help find a cure for cancer, <laughs> okay? Um, so you can add that, but just think, if you've got a phrase like that that you could use for a person, for an organization, for a music band, um, it just makes it so much easier. But the point I want to make is that you're going to go into, de into detail, you're going to develop it. Okay, and part of the advice I give for students who want to develop their answer, both in the speaking and in the writing, is to just use a simple structure where we say, we paraphrase, you know. One of the main reasons why I admire this person so much, that's a paraphrase, is largely because I think they are an incredibly positive role model for the younger generations or um, I've heard that they donate a large amount of their income to good causes to charities for example I heard he donated over one million pounds last year to charities that are helping that are trying to find a cure for cancer you see now um, just having th those phrases and those ideas in your pocket can help make your um, can help deliver your answers and help. How would we say now? Can help help you, give you a more fuller, complete answer. Now to finish off, I'm going to give you a model answer. So. We've got the cue card. Talk about an older person you admire. You should say who the person is, how long you've known them, what qualities they have, and this is the this is the clincher and why you admire them. This is where we can use our little structure of this uh, paraphrase. This is because give an example, give an anecdote, and then we're going to finish with a summary, closing our cue card answer. Right, well, the person that I'm going to talk about is my friend, Mike. He's a very close friend of mine and someone I admire greatly. I'm not entirely sure when we met. It could have been about seven years ago. It was when we were both playing football for the school team. 
Okay, so a little bit of detail here. And I'm avoiding saying I've known him for seven years. It could have been about seven years ago. It was when we were both playing football. So some great past tenses in there. We're both mad about football. So it was the shared love of the sport that got us talking. So I'm adding some more detail here. Shared love of the sport. We're both mad about football. Since leaving school, Mike set up his own company and has become a very wealthy man. I know I said at the beginning I would avoid using very, but sometimes, you know, we don't want to force it. Maybe I would have corrected it and said, and has become an incredibly wealthy man. He's a born leader. Can you see these structures now? Can you can see this richness. Um, I'm talking about his qualities as well. He's a born leader. You could see this when he was younger. He's the captain of the football team and head boy in our year. Again, more detail, more evidence explaining this quality. So it's hardly surprising that he's now running his own company. Another reason, though, is his entrepreneurial skill. So I'm adding more qualities here. Set up an online company with very little money. It doesn't have a billionaire father like Donald Trump. And at first, it faced lots of difficulties. But he was extremely determined. So I'm adding more qualities. I'm just layering it up now. Um, and his determination paid off and he now has an incredibly successful company. Okay, um, so again, I'm adding more, quali more qualities. I said he was very determined and his determination. So I've got that flexibility. In addition to his skills, he has great qualities such as charisma and charm. He's the most charming and charismatic man I've ever met. Can you see this linguistic dexterity? Can you see? You know, first, charisma and charm. Now, charming, charismatic. Before that, determined. Now, determination. It's clear I've got a good control of the language. So why do I admire him? Well, there's a number of reasons. Can you see? Just, you know, paraphrase. Didn't really paraphrase it, but I'm getting back onto the cue card. We're going to show the examiner we're getting full points for task response. Well, there's a number of reasons. Firstly, using these markers as well will help you with your cohesion and coherence. Firstly, he's a well-respected businessman and gained the respect of all his employees. Moreover, development, further development. Uh, setting up a business in a recession is also inspirational. And the fact that he never gave up despite some difficulties in the early period makes him such a positive role model. There we go. I could even say he even donates a large amount of his income to good causes and charities. Um, for example, I think he donated over a million pounds to a charity to help find a cure for cancer. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, and, and I would even add now, and that's why I and Mike is the person that I admire the most um, and that's my talk and I hope that you liked it okay so if you are struggling for a way to finish you can just add that on to, to the end it's a clear indication you've finished and it just helps the delivery that little bit smoother and that's it for me today I'm happy that you're listening if you've got any ideas or suggestions for future content shoot me an email and remember we've got our new instant essay check-in service available just go to ieltspodcast.com top right and you'll see there click on that link and you'll be able to go to our new essay check-in service you add your you paste your essay in paste the question and instantly you'll get feedback on your grammar, on your cohesion and coherence, task response, and even grammatical range and accuracy. Complete and lexical resource. Completely free if you want more detailed feedback and you can upgrade. It's ridiculously low. It's like $12 a month. You can submit as many essays as you want. 
That's it for me today. Have a super day and wish you all the best with your IELTS preparation. Thanks for listening to IELTSpodcast.com.